Hi there, okay. Uh, in this lecture, the next we're going to draw close to this narrative section and I'm going to show you what I've done. I've kind of finished it up now and I've pretty much completed the objective of what I wanted to get across to you and you'll see that in the uh, when we go through the actual scene itself. So you remember this document? I did a lot of these and a few more, uh, but I haven't done them all. There's a few here. Uh, like the wheelbarrow I didn't do, uh, some plates and cups and things, I haven't done those. Uh, I didn't do a machete, uh, a log gate, although I got a bit, bit of a makeshift one. And there's a few, just a few little things I didn't do, but, you know, in this section you can, you can take it to where you want to go with your scene, but, uh, you know, the point of this was to sort of show you what you can do with detail and the and sort of working on the narrative elements of your scene. So let's take a look at a few of these objects in Substance Painter. Okay, so if we look at our list, we've got a makeshift canvas tent like structure, and that's this here. And this is going to be used to put all the objects underneath, maybe a, and a table and a few things just to keep it dry. That was the idea of that. But I wanted to make it look really camp like and make shift like he's chopped down some trees. He's carved out a bit of wood from branches and stuff, tied it all up, bit of canvas. And um, yeah, and I think we I think I achieved that. And this is just a decal on here. You can see one of uh, one of substance painters standard ones i just painted it on there just to show you what you can do there's no mesh giving me this draped cloth look this is all height map oops height map and uh, normal map there you can see if i turn it to the left yeah, it's pretty flat there's no mesh there so it's quite a good effect so i was quite quite pleased with that that's kind of my centerpiece really for for this for this update if you like I sort of centered everything around this object. So let's have a look at some more. Okay, so here's a wooden box I created. Uh, just a crate so we can put like a lot of loose stones in there and make it feel like he's actually storing some stuff uh, in his camp, which I thought would be quite cool. And again, I put like a notice sticker on the front just to give us some character. And these objects kind of bring it up to date a bit more as well, bring the sort of the um, t the era, if you like, into focus because this sort of thing wouldn't have happened a while back, and this looks pretty machined. This object, so you've got to be careful of that. If you want really really old, make sure your objects fit within the sort of time that your game exists. And that was a pretty straightforward layered system. That so there's nothing much to it than that. Okay, so let's look at another one. Okay, and here I did a sort of a, a gravestone. I thought it'd be really cool just to show some uh, compassion. My, you know, you know, my character would have a bit of ca compassion. He had a dog once, so I thought it'd be quite cool if he like buried it, put up a little stone and a cross just to mark the spot of where his dog was. And hang a little doggy bone off the off the cross which is quite cool and you know that that says a lot about a character that sort of thing he, he's obviously got some sort of emotion some sort of feeling um, he's not completely cold and callous if you know what i mean uh, so that's that was pretty cool it's a nice touch i thought you'll see that in the scene when we go through the scene quite a lot of layers on here and uh, including the bone and the moss, uh, the stone, wood. So there's a lot of elements in here, but it's all packed into one texture. So, you know, that's pretty cool. Works quite well. So, so let's have a look at another one. Okay, I wanted some, uh, you know, this guy's in the forest. He's digging for precious stones, metals, or whatever it is he's digging up. And uh, I wanted to get the feeling across that he's... Um, quite paranoid that something or someone might come along and steal it or you know we know that there's a lot of wolves in this forest so he's sort of protecting himself with these sort of barriers and they're quite formidable they could sort of hurt a creature if it tried to get over them so I built some of these I built two different ones one like this and then one sort of straight vertical one and I can construct like little walls around his hut 
with these which I thought would be really nice touch and that comes through really well the rope works quite well uh, I think a rope I got from substance share or substance source one of the two and uh, sort of tweaked it for my own use there and that works really well quite a nice model that okay let's take a look at another one Okay, here's a pickaxe. I did several little tools. I did a pickaxe, a shovel, and a fork. And again, you'll see them all in the scene. These are the tools he uses to sort of hack away at maybe at some earth and stuff he digs up. And the tools he used to get to get his sort of rocks out of the ground or out of the out of the caves nearby. It says a lot about the narrative. I mean. There's not a lot of the things you use this for, so it kind of makes a little statement uh, in its own right, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's have a look at some more. And there's the fork, which came out quite good. And with these, I built a high and a low version, and I baked the high. Uh, you can see it's not very high mesh, but you know, because I baked the normal map onto these from the high mesh, then it, it, it comes out really well. Sort of gets rid of that polygonal look. But still keeps the mesh pretty small. You can see it's very, very low poly there. There's my spade. Again, quite low poly. But I used a high poly version to bake down a normal map onto this. And here's a bucket. This is probably a bit extreme. The rust is way, probably way too much. But I kind of left it deliberately just to, just to show you what, uh, what's what there. I could probably quite easily get rid of some of this. Um, you know, not make it so intense. Um, but you know, yeah, it's probably a bit more like it. But I put it in with really intense rust and um, yeah it works it's fine but it's quite cool so yeah I can maybe use I could probably spit out two lots of uh, texture and to have two different buckets perhaps using the same mesh and that would be quite cool so that's nothing you know that's something you can do change the color of the metal perhaps you know there's the metal color you know don't go too extreme let's take it a bit darker you know, do whatever you want. If you want multiple buckets, different sort of textures, same mesh, that's fine, you can do that. Let's take a look at another. Again, there's a log table that I created. But anyway, all these objects together uh, make up a sort of feeling of, of uh, this guy's uh, camp. It gives you a camp feeling rather than just somebody living in a hut. Uh, and I'm gonna show you the comparison of what it was like what it is like now and you know just you know, if you want to take this forward and add some more detail please do because i think it could do still a lot more work in it and it would really really bring it to life and um but you'll see so in the next video i'm going to actually go into into unity and we're going to walk around and i'll talk about it some more inside unity so i'll see you in there